and welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Um, now today we're going to take a look at the puzzle on screen and it's been created by Sam Kappelman Lines. Those of you who watch the channel will know that Sam, um, A, he's a great supporter of the channel and B, he is one of the best Sudoku setters on the planet. Um, and unfortunately Sam recently had a bit of a, um, a run-in with COVID-19 and during that time his sort of got his creative juices flowing so to speak and he created a sequence of 10 puzzles which he's themed on the uh, the word uncertainties um, and this is one of those puzzles one of his favorite from the collection I'm going to put a link under the under the uh, under the video so any of you who are interested can see all of the other puzzles in the collection in fact I may run a poll at some point to see which other other puzzle you'd like us to do um, and I'm gonna I'll talk through the rules in a moment um, but I've been quite heartened actually over the last uh, 48 hours by the response of the puzzle community to what's going on in the world um, as a few Facebook groups I'm aware of where there's been a tremendous sharing of puzzles um, to sort of get people through self-isolation um, and it got me thinking about what we could do on the channel to sort of help with that um, and I think I'm not sure what's going to be possible, but certainly my intention at the moment is to try and up our output slightly. Um, uh, if I can, and if Mark can, we will try and do an extra video on some days, probably on just a classic Sudoku. We get sent a lot of classic Sudokus, and maybe what we might do is just turn the, the webcam on and record our solves. Um, so there won't be any, um, you know, we're not going to create amazing thumbnails um, or think too much about it but just to give a bit of extra content um, in these times where everyone has a bit more time on their hands at home and needs maybe uh, some light relief to fill that so I say I'm not sure how often we'll be able to do it but if we can we will um, other things to mention uh, do check out if you're a patron of the channel do check out um, Patreon at the moment we've put the video up on how to solve um, this month's reward puzzle which is a sandwich Sudoku um, so that went up a couple of days ago um, so have a look at that uh, what else did I want to mention I'm not sure oh yes there was one other thing um, again in thinking about sort of what's going on um, we have been working for a while on an idea based around sort of puzzles for teenagers um, puzzle hunt ideas like that and we have a couple of puzzle hunts now already prepared which are in testing um, and if I can we will release those in the coming days and weeks um, and the idea is there that they're sort of they're not going to be as difficult as the puzzles that we tend to feature on the channel but that they they should be interesting for people who are newer to, to puzzling generally but who want something fun to do so these are these will be sequences of puzzles where you have to you have to solve them and find you know find the treasure at the end type thing um, and we're designing them as I say with kids in mind and obviously kids are extremely affected at the moment by what's going on um, and they may find themselves wanting as I say a bit of mental uh, exercise that's not school work from home um, and yeah you might want to point them in the direction of the channel as and when we get those up and running so just some ideas for the next few weeks there um, now let's talk about Sam's puzzle um, as I say he, he themed these puzzles on uncertainties so what he did was he sort of blended rule sets into each of these 10 puzzles and in this puzzle he's blended clone sudo sudoku with extra region sudoku so let me tell you how that works you can see in the grid we've got three regions which are nine cells large and are identically shaped now two of these regions are clones of each other which means that whatever we put let's imagine that we worked out that these two regions this one and this one were clones then whatever we put into this square let's put a, what's going to work a four four will work if we put a four into that square there would have to be a four in that position, i.e. in the identical position on the clone. So if that was a seven, then um, this square here would have to be a seven, etc. So these, these 
um, shapes would have to be feature absolutely identical numbers in an identical order those numbers can repeat you know they just you just have to make sure that, that the contents are identical now the other region so there's going to be two clone regions and let's imagine this was the other region this would be an extra region in the sudoku i.e it would need to contain the digits from one to nine exactly once each so it's sort of like an extra three by three box but it's a weird shape um, now the the tricky part i imagine is going to be to, that we we don't know which of these regions are clones and which is the extra region at the start we're going to have to work that out so that's going to be our challenge today uh, mark has tested this puzzle he found it very very hard he said um, i don't know what that means um, because obviously i don't like to know but he you know he just that that was what that was what his feedback was so um, i know that this puzzle though was one of sam's favorites from the collection which means it'll be awesome so do have a go by clicking on the link under the video and with that i'm going to have a go now how do we start i can put nines into one of those two squares that's these nines interacting two up here must be in one of those two squares seven must be in one of those two squares and one of these two squares uh, okay sorry just one second let me just stare at this for a moment and just try and see something more than this Oh, of course right sorry look ones these two ones now they have an impact on the bottom box in the sense that they lock ones into this region which is important because now we, as we know there is a one in one of these three positions there cannot be this cannot be a clone of this because if it is there would be a one in one of those three squares and it would clash so these two regions are not clones of one another and therefore this region is a cloned region but we just don't know which of these is the other clone and one of these regions either this one or this one is the extra region the one that has to contain the digits from one to nine so how do we use that knowledge Well, there's something going on with nines because not the, the nines in the grid. Yes, yes, this is this is very clever. This is very clever. So, so let's think about nines. These nines and this nine have quite a profound effect on these two regions in the sense that let's let's imagine first that this was the extra region. So we have to put a nine on this on this on what in one of the yellow squares, which cell can take a nine. And I think it's only this one because this nine rules out all those squares and all those squares and this nine rules out that one. So under hypothesis one which is that this is the extra region this square is a nine now the only other thing that could exist is that this isn't the extra region this one is now where could we put a nine on this region you can see that this nine rules out all of these squares immediately and that nine takes care of the eighth square so this would have to be the nine now this is beautiful this is absolutely beautiful because what it means is that we don't need to know which of these is the extra region to be able to deduce something because if this is a nine one of these two squares must be a nine and if the, sorry if this is the extra region one of these two squares must be a nine and if this is the extra region exactly this square must be a nine so there is no way that this square could ever be a seven because we know one of these two squares is a two, one of these two squares is a nine, 
and therefore this square is a 7. Wow, okay. And we can fill these, this in as a 2-9 pair. This must be a 6 to complete the box. And let's delete that because otherwise I'm going to start assuming that that 9 is a real 9 and it's not. We still don't, we still don't know which of these regions is the extra region. There must be a 9 in one of these two squares though now, whatever, because of the 9 here and the 9 here, and this 9. Actually, that wasn't nearly as helpful as I thought it was going to be. Okay, so we're going to have to think harder, I think. There's a lot of thinks in that sentence. Um, right. Hang on, there's something going on with ones here. These ones rule a one out from these three squares. So, yes, this is. Yes, this is this is the trick. This is the trick. Okay, so let's imagine that this and this are the clones. That's one of the possibilities. So. If these two regions are clones, these ones are very interesting because because they look none of those squares could be a one because none of these squares could be a one. So where are we going to put the one in this box in box six? This one and this one interact on the box, rule out all of those squares as well. So we'd have to put the one in one of those two positions. But this one up here means there would be a one here. And now look these ones lock a one into one of those two squares on the clone. Now we said we started this by imagining these were clones of each other. If there's a one in one of those two squares, there's got to be a one in one of those two squares where it will clash. So we have done it. We have disambiguated the puzzle. Um, oh, put those nines back. This and this are not clones of each other. Therefore, this and this are clones of each other. And this is the extra region. And if this is the extra region, we need to put a 9 on it. And we know the 9 must be here. That's the only place a 9 can go. Which means there's a 9 in one of those two squares. Now, we've got to be careful now because... Ah, uh, no, this... Oh, no, that is that is good. Yeah, that is good. Because now we know these are clones of each other, this can't be a 9 anymore. Because if this is a 9, this will be a 9, and it will clash. So this is not 9, this is 9. How on earth do you go about setting something like this? It is just baffling. Oh, now, look, we know that this is a 2 or a 9, so we know its counterpart on the clone is a 2 or a 9. And now, oh, this is beautiful. These can't be 9. This can't be 9. Because if it's a 9, this will be a 9. And that will mean that the 9 in this box has to be in an illegal position because of the 9s here and here. So these are both 2. That must be a 9. And I must, ah, the 2's help with this 2. That must be a 2. Just wondering whether we could eliminate either of these squares because of the clone principle, but I don't think we can. Oh, 
Oh, but look, this is so beautiful. This too, this too is massive. It has, it's very hard to see, but this too rules out those three squares. And we might ordinarily stop there, but look, because this two sees these three squares and these are on the clone, these three squares can't be twos either. So this two rules the roost in terms of box five. It rules out all of those squares from being twos. There must be a two in one of those two squares. Oh, and now where do we put a two in this box? It can only go here because of these twos here and these twos. So this is a two, this is a nine. That locks a nine in, in at the top look. And we need to put a two in the extra region. We have not got a two on this shape yet. It can't, it can only go in one of those two squares which is perfect because now look at this we've got in this box the two is locked into row five or row six in this box the two is locked into row five or row six so none of these squares could be a two but i need to put a two somewhere in row four so it must go here and that is on the clone so this is the two <laughs> it's weird this sort of rebounds back again and you get so much extra information and we've done all the twos now what a puzzle what a puzzle this is oh ones look these ones lock a one onto the clone so one of those two squares is a one. Now, presumably, yeah, this one can't be a one because if this is a one, that square, which is its clone counterpart, is a one, and that's not possible. So this is the one. One in one of these two squares. Ah, but this can't be a one because that's its counterpart on the clone and it sees a one already, so there's a one at the top. I think we're gonna get more ones here because this can't be a one can it for the same reason so this has got to be a one one of these squares has got to be a one now ah but this one actually gives us this one because it's on the clone i just forgot which means this is a one there we go so oh now we've done all the ones as well Ah, now this row, we've got three, five, and eight has got to go into those squares to complete the row. That means these two squares are the equivalent of these two squares. Ah, so eight here, this square can be three, five, or eight because of the clone, but it can't be eight because of the eight in the box, so neither can that one. Three, five, eight here, that can be, that's completely fine, that's not restricted. Uh, let's look at this box. So we've got one, two, three, five, and eight. So we need to place four, six, seven, and nine in this box. So seven is locked at the top. Four is locked into one of those squares, and six can go in any of the four. So this square can only be a four or a six, which means its counterpart on the clone can only be a four or a six. Uh. Oh, now these sevens here, 
Oops. Rule out 7 from those two squares on the clone. Now that means these two squares on the clone are not 7. Therefore the 7 in the central box must be in one of those two squares. Oh, look, 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 look. I mean, it's ridiculous setting. Ridiculous. This 3-5 pair. Now, whichever I choose here, look at the effect it has on this box. If I make these both 3, let's show you. If I make these both 3, where do I put a 3 in the central box? It can only go here. This can only be a 4-6 because of the clone, so the 3 would have to go into that position. Now, the only other situation is that these are 5s. That has the same effect. It forces the 5 into this position. So, whichever I choose here, this it has to appear here as well. This square can never be a 7. That square is a 3 or a 5. Therefore, the 7 must be here. And that means that oh no, I don't get anything from that. <laughs> um, oh, this must be important. This three five must be important. And or the fact that it gives us this 7 must be important. Oh, oh yes, it is important. So where can I put a 4 now in row 4? The 4's up here and here, rule out those two squares. So that one is the only position that can be a 4. Puts a 4 down there. The 4 is on the clone. So this square is a 4. That means that square's a 6. That means that square's a 6. And taking this 6, I place the 4, the 9, and the 7. Wow. This 9 gives us a 9 here. These two squares have got to be 5 and 6, which I can resolve. Look. Let me just finish. Let me just check I've done everything I can over here, though. I don't want to miss. Yeah, because I've got 7s down here now. 7s. Fours down here and sixes. This six means this is a six. Six in one of those two squares on the left hand side. Um, right, now let's come back across here. This six resolves the six five at the top. That places a 5 there, look. And a 6 in one of these two squares. These two squares have got to be 3 and 8 to complete the box. This square, therefore, is the equivalent of this square. So that's a 3 or an 8. Fives now have an effect on this box. Lock a 5 into one of those two squares. Oh, and that's important because where can a 5 now go in column 5? Can't go here, can't go here, so there's a 5 at the top there. So this square has a three or, is a 3 or an 8 to complete the column. We need to put a 4 on this shape because this is the extra region. I've not really used this yet. But you can see that 4 doesn't go here and it doesn't go in any of those three squares. So 4 must be in one of those two positions. Which means that's not a 4. This is a 4. That's not a 4. This is a 4. Uh, 
Oh, look, 3, 8 here, 3... This can't be a 5, because this can only be a 3 or an 8. So this is a 3, 8 pair now. So this must be a 5, 7 pair. And... 5, 7... Oh, there's a five pencil marked here, so we can resolve that. That's five and seven like this. Oh, the five here is on the clone. I could have got that ages ago. Sorry, that's me being a bit slow. That resolves the five at the bottom. Five can only go here in the middle box. So this square must be a 3 or an 8, which we already knew. I just, oops, I just hadn't spotted it. Ah, I want to put a 3 or an 8 in the square. There we go. And so we've got 3, 8, 3, 8, 3, 8, 3, 8. That's all looking nice. This, ah, looking at the bottom of the row, where do we put an 8? We've got an 8 up there. That rules out that square. So this is a 3. Sorry, this is an 8, and this is a 3. One of these two squares is a 3 now. And in fact, we need to put a 3 on the extra region. So given the 3 can't be in either of those squares, it has to be here. Now that locks a 3 into one of those two positions, which fixes the 3 8 in box that gives us an 8 here. This is a 7-8 pair now. So this should be the 3. That looks like it's right, doesn't it? It's working. This should be a 3. That fixes the 3 and the 8 at the top, which fixes the 8 and the 3 here. This is the only place an 8 can go in this box. That gives us an 8 down this side. 8-8. Eight, eight. Uh, so what do we need? We need 4, 6 and 7. Is that right? Into these squares? 4. So 4 must be here. These are 6 and 7 in some order. Let's put that in. Uh, we can probably resolve the rest of this now because the extra region needs a 6 on it. It hasn't got a 6, so that's the only place the 6 can go. That fixes the 6 and the 7 and the 4. This must be a 6 now. These two squares have got to be the same because they're on the clone. So you can see this can't be a 3. The 3 must be here. This must be a 7. This must be... Oh, this is... Actually, let's just look at this. Let's admire this. Yes, we should admire this. Look at the finish. We've got... Ordinarily, this would be a deadly pattern. But it's not here because of this 7. And that forces this one to be its clone counterpart. So that's a 7, that's an 8, that's an 8, that's a 7. Yes, what a puzzle. I love that. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Join us again tomorrow on Cracking the Cryptic.